Welcome back to the show, everyone. Great to be here with you, getting set up for our first Cabral host call of the weekend, answering our community's questions each and every weekend, all year long, 52 weeks of the year. Hopefully, you've been joining us for the past couple of years, where we've answered now well over 5,000 questions from the community just on the Ask Cabral. And you know, every single day, we answer dozens, if not 100 questions inside of CabralSupportGroup.com. So if you are looking for an answer the same day, head on over to cabralsupportgroup.com. Ask your question right there. One of our amazing health coaches will be able to either point you to a podcast, a consultation call, a lab test, a protocol, whatever it might be. Whatever they feel the best thing is for you to take a look at, they will give you that recommendation. But of course, I'm here as well and do feel free to uh, ask at Ask Cabral, stephencabral.com forward slash Ask Cabral. All questions are answered live on the show uh, in the order they come in. So we are typically six or seven weeks behind. First question today is coming from 12-2. And this show is going to debut, let's just see here, it's going to debut on January 15th. Well, that seems to me just about six weeks or so behind. All right, let's dive into the show. Let's answer some questions. First question today is from, actually came from 1130. It's from Ashley. Ashley is writing in saying, hi, Dr. Brawl. I have amenorrhea for quite a long time. It first started when I lost a large amount of weight during a bodybuilding competition. This was 10 years ago. Over the last years, I put on, I was put on birth control to help try and regulate it the period and bring it on. However, I didn't like the way that it made me feel. And I knew that was only putting a bandaid on the problem and not fixing the real issue. I've tried many different things to no avail. Fast forward to present day in the last two years, my period has started to return. My doctor says this is a great sign. Maybe my body is becoming more balanced. However, it is still irregular. I've gotten it about four to five times a year for the past two years. It lasts just a few days. The very hard part is I will experience symptoms for three to four weeks, PMS symptoms for three to four weeks. Irritability, extreme bloating, uh, extreme nipple and breast discomfort, truly severe symptoms. It even affects me mentally as well as physically. I know you often talk about estrogen dominance, but in my case, my estrogen, including estradiol and those other female hormones are extremely low. What do you do in this case? How can I rebalance these hormones and ease these symptoms? There's a lot of information out there and it can be so overwhelming, like there's so much I need to do. Please help. Okay. So, Get it. I understand all the information. We work with many women just like yourself inside of our practice, and we've been doing that now for over a decade. So all of that to say is that I'm happy to share with you what we've done to help women just like yourself. And it is a very good sign that you're now starting to get your period, even if it is just half the amount of months or four to five months uh, instead of 12. So you know, here's how we want to look at it, that there's still work to be done. I don't know your cortisol levels. I don't know your thyroid. I don't know your vitamin D. I don't know your hemoglobin hemoglobin A1C. I don't know your insulin. I don't know your uh, progesterone. And, uh, And again, those four cortisol during the day. But what I can tell you is this. If you just run one test called the stress hormones, mood, and metabolism, and you run it through Equal Life, I know that you're going to be working with my coaching team that I hop on a Zoom call with twice a week and we go over cases just like yours. So that is my recommendation because without that, sure, we can help you get back your period, your menstrual cycle, but we don't know what the underlying imbalances are. We will know once we run that test and we run it. Uh, again, during times of symptoms or for you, pretty much any time in the month, we can kind of look at, okay, what's going on on a daily basis. So that'll be helpful. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really what I would do. If I run the big five, if you can, if you can't run the big five, run that stress hormones, mood and metabolism test. You can find these labs at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. And uh, honestly, and truly, that's going to be a way they'll figure out because we'll talk about, okay, you are at a healthy weight for your height. Are you exercising too much? Are you fasting too long? You'll be able to talk about that with your health coach. All right. Anonymous is up next. And, and again, I just want to know if I ever give an answer like that. It's not to dismiss you, dismiss you, Ashley, or anyone else. It's that I would be doing you a disservice if we just played volley back and forth guessing as to what it is. So to run one lab that comes with a consultation and is dedicated just to you, that, that's the way that you do it. It ends all the frustration. And it doesn't mean you're going to get your period back the next four weeks. What it means is now we know what the issue is. We're going to work towards that. That's what we do. 
Anonymous is up next. Hi, Dr. Rawl. I'm a daily podcast listener, and I want to thank you for all of the wisdom you share. Thank you, Anonymous. Appreciate that. I've had medical issues that I was born with that has caused me to have chronic pain and multiple surgeries throughout childhood and all the way to be an adult now. I recognize as an adult that these procedures and how I was treated was at times necessary and that the doctors were only trying to help. However, lately, I've taken a look at what happened through a child's perspective and can see how scary, invalidating, and traumatic those experiences were. How do I move on from medical trauma? How do I get help with moving through this when the same people I look to for help are the same people that trigger these feelings in the first place? My body feels constantly stuck in SNS dominance despite following all the health protocols, and I know this issue is holding me back from being well. I've tried working with different therapists, hypnotherapists, and a life coach. Any guidance would be much appreciated. Yeah, I mean, Anonymous, I totally feel for you. I totally understand. Um, I think I was you know, like in between fortunate where when I had the worst health issues happen to me, I was 17 years old. So when I was told it was all in my head or, you know, I'm probably not going to live a very long life or you'll just have to get worse and then we'll be able to diagnose you or we're just going to wait and see. It was all very invalidating. I was condescending and those doctors, you know, honestly shouldn't be practicing medicine. Uh, but alas, uh, conventional medicine allows for that. So, you know, I had to work through some of those things myself, uh, without a doubt, but I do know what you're talking about. I get it. I totally understand. And I've seen this happen before. You're on the right track. You're speaking with therapists, hypnotherapists, life coach. What I can tell you is you just haven't connected with the right one. I didn't connect with the right one until like, five or six years ago. And again, like I've been doing work for a long time on myself, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, all those things. And I, and every year I was, I was better and better and better, right. Physically, mentally, spiritually, all, all the way. But then, you know, I met, I met just some great, I don't know if you want to call them therapists, but coaches, performance coaches, life coaches, um, that were very helpful. And everybody has to just connect with the right person. So I'm a huge fan of, at home, doing tapping, which is the emotional freedom technique. Just check, go to stephencabal.com forward slash podcast and check out my interview on tapping, emotional freedom technique, EFT, that you can do on your own, but you still want to work with a good therapist. And I work with great people that combine NLP as well as hypnotherapy and regression therapy. So that's great, really great. And then internal family systems, although I've never used it, I can't even tell you how many people that have gotten benefit from it. So I would start there and uh, you'll get there. No doubt about it. Keep doing the work, keep reading the books and keep a positive mindset and you'll, you'll get there. No doubt about it. Aaron's up next. Hoping you have some advice. I keep getting sinus infections and constantly having allergy issues and in the winter often get bronchitis. I've done allergy testing and have bad environmental allergies. I've been doing a lot of gut healing over the past few years and I'm still having issues. Starting to feel defeated. Any ideas or advice? It does help matter. Most family members on my mom's side have allergy issues as well. Thanks so much for all you do. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this sounds like me when I, I was, uh, I had allergies until about 30 years old, 27, 28 years old, uh, probably 30 years old. And, uh, here's what I can do. I would run the big five labs. No doubt about it because it's not just environmental. It's anytime you're filling up your rain barrel. So if you haven't read the rain barrel effect, just go to stephencabral.com forward. Oh, just go to stephencabral.com. Click where it says free book. You'll get the book for free. I pay to print the book. It costs about $7 to print the book. We charge about $7 for shipping. I pay to print it. You pay for the shipping. Some people even get mad at me because they have to pay for the shipping. <laughs> I'm like, I'm paying for the printing of the book. <laughs> Literally. There is. But anyway, I digress. People are, people are always people. It is what it is. I understand. It's no big deal. Uh, but I want people to have that book because you know, getting over allergies is the rain barrel effect. It really is. There's not one thing, you know, you can't, I always, you know, people used to joke around with me, you need to live in a bubble. And I was like, well, I can't live in a bubble and I want to be able to go out in the springtime and I can't. So here's the thing. I could tell you to do a 21 day functional medicine detox. I could tell you to use the sinus support product. I could tell you to use alkalizing vitamin C and Hispro. And I think all of those would be great recommendations. I would tell you to use the neti pot, right? The nasal pot. And every morning in the shower, you're going to do a nasal cleanse. And then every night, you're going to do a nasal cleanse after you come up from the outside. And I think that would be great advice. And all of those things are going to help. 
but they're not going to get to the underlying root cause. So while you get to the underlying root cause, sure, use those things symptomatically, some omega-3s as well, but let's get to the underlying root cause, okay? So if you can, you're going to run the candida metabolic and vitamins test. If you can, you're going to run the food sensitivity test. If you can, you're going to run the stress hormones, mood and metabolism test. And if you can, you're going to run the metals, metal, metals and minerals test. So the big five, if possible. If not, run the starter kit, and that's a great place to start, okay? Kathy's up next. Dear Dr. Rawl, thank you for helping so many people. You are amazing. Thank you, Kathy. My daughter, who's in her 20s, wants to know why something has been happening for the last few years. And I did do a podcast, archive search, but nothing came up. So I would love to know if you've seen this before. The first bite of any type of food that she eats after not eating for a couple of hours, especially first thing in the morning, tastes very sour and causes her cheeks to pucker. The food is not necessarily a sour food, so it seems a little unusual. Water is the only thing that will not do this. She's in great shape, takes good care of her health. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Well, this is odd, meaning like odd that we pretty much have heard and seen it all. And I can't remember this ever coming up. And I, and I say that because usually I have a frame of reference for every question that I get, and I don't do any prep work for any of these. So I apologize, Kathy, because I'm not doing research specifically on this. But there's two things that comes to mind. One, I just want to make sure that your daughter's not in the state of hypoglycemia. So all she needs to do is use a glucometer, take her blood sugar first thing in the morning or before she has that next meal. If it's below a 70, below a 72, then she could be having low blood sugar. And I just did a show on that. And it was episode, let's see. I know it was just in the last couple of weeks. One more peak. Oh, there it is. Okay, 2160. I'm glad I was able to find that. So Kathy, you'll want to check out episode 2160 if she has low blood sugar. Okay. And next is mouth bacteria. I just wonder if she has some type of fermentable anaerobic bacteria in the mouth. So what she may want to do is use coconut oil or sesame oil, swish that around upon waking. It's just called oil pulling. I have shows on oil pulling. Do that for five minutes or so, 10 minutes maximum. Five minutes is good. And then spit that in the toilet. Don't spit it down a drain. You don't want to put too much oil down a drain. It's not good for it. And, um, and then... She can just swish her mouth with water. See if that works. That coconut oil or the sesame oil is going to kill some of that bacteria there. Then if that happens to be the case, then we're going to want to look at overall gut bacteria and just make sure the whole digestive system is balanced. All right. So those are my two thoughts. Hopefully that's helpful. That was, uh, that was definitely a stumper right there. All right. Tina is up next. She's our last question for the day. We always do six questions each and every uh, Saturday and Sunday. Is that six? One. Two, three, four, five. No, this is five. All right, we have one more to go after Tina. All right, Tina says, I have, a, I have a few brown spots on my face that my dermatologist is calling melasma. Is there a way to get rid of it naturally without using all the bleach and chemical creams he's recommending? He told me melasma comes from the sun and from the heat. So now I'm afraid to go for a walk during the day. And I've also been avoiding the infrared sauna. All the spots caused by liver toxicity, hormone imbalance, how can I get rid of them? Okay, so this is a great one, Tina. I, you're probably a new listener to the show, so we appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, okay? And then we're going to use the search box at the top, and we're going to type in melasma. I'm going to do it with you, B-M-E-L-A-S-M-A, -E melasma. And it's going to show you all the previous shows I've done on melasma. Uh, episode 456, 420, 526, 576, 1016, 1472, and 1625. All right? So just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts, type in melasma, and it will give you all the details you need about how it occurs, what you need to do without using all those harsh chemicals, creams, bleaches, et cetera, in order to fix it from the inside out. All right? All right, let's do one more question, which we said we always want to get six, so we're going to answer Lola's. Hi, I've learned so much from the show, and it is truly a blessing. I'm a 24-year-old 
vata pitta female with kapha for kruti, and I have had alopecia since 16. I always had extremely fine and thin hair, so getting alopecia really affected my mental health. It started out as a small, bald patch on the side of my head and one on the back, and then over the years, I got thinning at the temples, a receding hairline, thinning at the back of my crown. I've tried everything, but I haven't really found a solution. I recently adopted a pitta pacifying diet, but I'm not sure if it's helping. I'm now losing tiny hairs that almost look like velus hairs, and I'm not sure why. I think the hair that regrows falls out after a few weeks. Please provide some insight into what I could do. I've also tested my thyroid, and it's normal. All right, so I've done a whole show on female hair loss because it's different than male hair loss. Male hair loss is predominantly DHT. And female hair loss, there's about five to six reasons with DHT not being the predominant. So let's see if we can find the specific one on female hair loss causes for you. And again, you can always ask this at cabralsupportgroup.com because it's a whole show. It's a 25-minute show, like really going deep into why uh, women lose their hair. Uh, And again, you want to make sure that when you do a test for your thyroid that is not just TSH. You, you need to run your TSH uh, free T4, free T3, and TPO antibodies because you could have an autoimmune issue, which is causing hair loss. So this is really important, really, really important. Uh, no, that's not it. Let me see if I can look one more time, and then I'm just going to have you ask at cabralsupportgroup.com for the full podcast. Just because, oh, there it is. Main causes for women's hair loss. Thank you. I'm happy that I was able to find that. 1510. All right. So Lola, if you could go to stephencabral.com forward slash 1510, it will give you all the reasons for, for female hair loss, uh, hair loss. And um, with the understanding that you also want to look for autoimmune issues and overall toxicity. So if you can only start With two labs, it's called the starter kit. That's where I would start. Ideally, you would run the big five. The big five is going to get to the bottom of what is going on. So that's what I recommend. Uh, Thank you so much, everyone, for writing in today. Hopefully, this was helpful. Hopefully, it's going to get you started on that path to healing. Thank you so much, and I'll be answering six more of our community's questions tomorrow. Take care, everyone. 